Hello and welcome back to Monster Hunter Generations, where today I've swapped out my cat's poison weapons finally because we're fighting monsters that are just straight up immune to poison. I'm pretty sure it's only the Garugas and maybe Nakarkos that are immune to poison in this game. So yeah, and we're fighting some Garugas, which means we, we need to not have poison. It's as simple as that. And here we go. I've said it before, I will say it again. It is interesting that Deadeye Garugas are the only monsters, the only deviant monsters that are smaller than the base versions. Oh, it's here? Disgusting. Don't know why I used that cool drink. Most of the time, Deadeyes will actually stay out of the hot areas. And let's go ahead and fill up our meter on these slag toths. Kind of interesting how it didn't seem to mind the first hit. But yeah, dead eyes are smaller than regular Garugas, but they are feistier. Like quite a bit feistier actually. And they have the only low grade damage roar in the game. All other roars that can cause damage are high grade. But this guy, if he does his standing roar, you get blown away. Whereas if he does his little hop back roar, that one does not do the same. And that's one of his new moves there. He just skips at you. It is, of course, not his only new move, but it is the one he most often uses. He's also got the forward jump beak slam, which is a variation on an old move rather than a new move of its own, in and of itself, rather. Uh, he does get deadly poison on the tail flips, but thankfully that stops as soon as you break the tail, which is really, really easy. That was another new move. He can follow up the beak slam with basically some excavation. Yeah, basically, if you can get one ride, you can stop this guy from doing his deadly poison. Just got to put your damage on the tail, and I am lucky I got that flinch, because otherwise I was going to take a fireball to the face. And that wouldn't have been pleasant for me. He can also follow up his flips with a glide and another flip, so that's another thing it's got over regular Gruga. Now, I'm not entirely certain, but the monster info for... Deadeye. Wow, I, I'm lucky I didn't take some poison there. Monster info for Deadeye suggests it gets tired more easily than regular Garugas. And I think that is entirely possible. Like, I do see them get tired more than any other Deviant. But I don't know about whether or not they get more tired easily, more easily than a regular Garuga. Can I maybe actually hit with this? Thank you. What did I break? A, a wing, a face. There goes the tail, so no more deadly poison from this one. I find it kind of interesting that the only monsters in this game that get noxious poison are deviants. Oh. You hungry? I'm sorry. I interrupted. Looked like he was trying to dig up some conchu. But yeah, now, instead of having noxious poison on the tail sweeps and deadly poison on the tail flips, he's just got regular poison on both. Actually, it looks like noxious poison on the flips. I don't plan to eat a flip to find out. But, okay, looks like just regular poison on the flip. I also find it interesting that whereas every Garuga in 4U had one ear and maybe one eye, I'm not certain on that part, but yeah, all the Garugas in 4U were pre-damaged, whereas in this game, it's only the dead eyes. And he is tired. Ow. 
And since he's not enraged, it means we can actually get him in one of these. And it looks like I've got pretty good timing. Okay. I guess I don't get to sharpen, but that's all right. Got to be careful when going near the back, because as you can see, it bounces me. Yeah, getting this thing in a pit while it's tired is good. Get to do lots of damage, because it's just going to sit here taking it. And really, we probably should have gone for the face, but I went where I was. All right, let me get my red gauge. There we go. So I need to sharpen, and I need more health. Ow. So yeah, there's the excavation. That actually really hurts. So uh, try not to be in front of this thing's face when it's doing its beak slams. It sometimes doesn't end very well. Of course, really, you shouldn't be in front of its face anyway, because that's where its beak is. In front of its face during the slams, of course. Being in front of its face just normally is totally fine because the beak is nice and soft relative to other things. Oop. That's fine. Asclepius has us. Oh, Garuga gone. So, what's in here? Oh. Okay. Forgot to paint it, but thankfully we can follow it pretty easily. But I will paint it in here just so that we don't have any concerns later. Or I'll miss it with my paintball. That works too. So I've actually been playing some Monster Hunter stories since I recorded the last episode because it's out now. And it's pretty fun. Uh, paintballs are quite different in that game. Basically, you fight monsters, and if you paintballed them during the fight, then they'll run off at the end, and then you can go find their nest and bring back eggs. Of course, you can also find nests via other means, but if there's a specific monster you want to get eggs from, then that's the way to do it. Yeah, it's a pretty fun RPG. Uh, combat's kind of rock, paper, scissors based but each monster only throws basically one or two types. Minion monsters only throw one, large monsters only throw two from what I've seen. Uh, basically, uh, power beats technique, speed beats power, technique beats speed, and there's also special moves that monsters can use which don't have a type and some which do have a type. Yeah, it's a simple combat system, but it's, it's fun enough. Plus, I'm really a fan of the art style. Like, getting to see the monsters in that cartoony art style and getting to fight alongside one. It's pretty great. And I was actually really hoping that I would have uh, finished getting my meter rather than losing out on it. Like, I was expecting that last hit before I used my spirit slashes to actually get me more meter. Looks like this guy is ready to die. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't record from my Japanese 3DS, so I can't record Monster Hunter stories. But apparently that's okay because it, because of the anime tie-in, the Monster Hunter stories Let's Plays, some of them are getting taken down. Like, not even... Not even you can't monetize it, just straight up taken down. Uh, if they've got cutscenes from the game, I guess because the people in charge of the anime don't want spoilers or something. Though the anime doesn't seem to be following the games very closely. Or rather, the game. There's only one. Maybe it will. It's actually being very slow about it. So, who knows whether or not it'll end up following the game. 
What I do know is if I get one more mount hit, this will probably end up getting ridden. So, while that means diff something different from riding monsters in stories, I still want to do it. Ow. Ow. Wow. Way to knock me up onto the freaking ledge. Well, let's get this thing in this trap, because my cats were nice enough to put it here. Filling the meter. And then... A not mount hit. I really would like to get a mount hit, Garug. Okay, you know what? This is fine. I can work with this. Stay there. Oh. Didn't even hit a mount zone anyway. Whatever. Perhaps Garug number two will let us up on it. Because I would like to break at least one of their backs, just for the back break part. And you may have seen, I did in fact bring a Farcaster this time. And I think the Garugas spawn like right around here. Nah, this can't be right. Either way, it's where the trap is. Just gonna be using that to hopefully get an early tail break and just not have to worry at all about the deadly poison because Garuga's tail breaks pretty quick, and getting rid of Deadly Poison is always good because Deadly Poison lives up to its name, as we saw against those Dread Queens. Okay, yeah, I was very wrong. I was thinking that it spawned in that tier, but then it was like, oh, maybe over here. I think what it is is, like, this is the area it leaves from. Or rather, the general part of the area. Wow, way to just run past the trap, jerk. Okay, I was kind of hoping I'd get to dodge the wind as it landed, but it got in the trap before the wind happened. Wow, just straight up missing. That trap did not end up being very good for the tail break. That's another of his new moves, the uh, gotta go fast run. It's actually got high wind to it, I think. Could be wrong. But hey, no more deadly poison. And that's good. Oh, thanks for leaving your tail right there. I kind of want to get this thing to do a standing roar, but the only way to really ensure that is to ride it. Ow. And if you're riding it, then, I mean, you won't be affected by the standing roar's damage effect, so. It's one of those things that you basically almost need a friend in order to properly test. Or to properly show off, rather, because I already know it's a thing. But... Yeah. I still want to get a ride. Whether or not we can actually see the standing roar doing its damage from it. If we do get a ride, maybe one of the cats would get close enough that we'd get to see them get blown away by it. Okay. You see, that right there... That hit we just took illustrates my biggest problem with Garuga. And it's that... Wow, really? <laughs> it's that its hitboxes are super terrible. Like, honestly, I think it's got the worst hitboxes in the game, especially with when and how they activate. Because, like, if it has to dash forward or really move forward at all, 
and it's not doing so with an attack of its own. Like, if it's moving forward with this, totally fine. But if it has to move forward to activate that, then all of that forward movement, even if it's only, like, two centimeters, still counts as it doing its dash attack. So it can still damage you and send you flying, which is terrible, because if it only has to move forward, like, two pixels, and it sends you flying because of it, even if you never see more than, like, one frame of it actually using an attack, then it just feels like you got hit by it deciding you got hit. And is bad. I don't like it. Because, like, what you saw there when I got sent flying and started complaining. I jumped off a ledge, it moved forward maybe a pixel or two, and then transitioned into a different attack, and I got hit by the moving forward a pixel or two. It's just, it's not good. I don't know how they really let it into the final game for freaking three games in a row now. Karuga's just bad. Which is a shame. I like Garuga as a monster. It's just, in terms of fighting it, it's, it's bad. It is unpolished. And they've had so many chances to actually go in there and fix it. Like, I know it was bad in Freedom Unite, and it's bad now. It's pretty much exactly as bad. But if you can't make it difficult when, by fixing it, like, if you fix it and it's no longer difficult because of it, then that just says that there's a problem with the design in the first place and that you need to add in other things to make up for it. At least that's my take on it. Like, if they, instead of having that charge do damage from its first frame, regardless of anything else... Oh, I was not following its shadow. Like, if instead of that, they gave it some really cool move that fits its character. And, like, they, they could have done so many things other than giving it a charge that does damage from frame one. And it's really a missed opportunity. Instead of being a cool, unique monster, it's a monster that shows how bad the games used to be. and just doesn't fit in with the rest of the monsters in the entire game. And it's actually really annoying, because... I mean, Garuga is like half a flagship by itself because it was the only brand new monster introduced in Monster Hunter Port or, uh, Freedom 1, as far as I'm aware. And it was one of the very first monsters to actually have its own theme that played regardless of where it was encountered. And... So, you know, it's got that going for it, but unlike basically all the other flagships in the entire series, it just doesn't really get any love put into it. it it's still just as janky as it's always been. Like, they added some cool attacks to Deadeye, but it's still got a lot of the just nonsense garbage that Garuga has always had and that it really needs to lose if it's to fit in with the rest of the monsters. So I need more gauge here. Garuga's also got the Kutku problem of, unlike some of the other monsters that have been updated from the older games, like the Bloses and the Wraths, they didn't feed it. It's still spindly. 
and now that they eat conchu that are balled up, it's... Yeah, they fit in the beak, but there's no way they can actually fit down the throat. Like, if you watch them actually eat in conchu, you see the throat literally expand to accommodate them. And then they'll eat several of them, and it's like... Look at the size of this Garuga's stomach. There is no way it can fit more than two conchu in it at a time. That is simply an impossibility. And it doesn't chew them, so you can't say like, oh, it's because it chews them up to be more space efficient. No, they eat them in their spherical bald form, and spheres are notorious for being highly inefficient when it comes to packing. Well, that sucked. I shouldn't have drank that, but whatever. Yeah, like, as much as I enjoy Garuga as a concept, it's just, it feels unfinished in so many ways. And I'd really like to see them put more effort into making Garuga fit in with the rest of the monsters. Because it could be really, really cool, but it's not living up to that. Ooh, just barely managed to hit. And what a hit. Getting this thing trapped in the net. Okay, I kind of wanted the fireball to come out, but whatever. That's fine. I can deal with regular poison, especially since my cat's curing me right now. How did I get stunned when I dodged a thing? It's always interesting when damage that doesn't flinch you manages to get a stun. Oh, here comes the super run. Whoosh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's only one monster in this game with higher land speed than Deadeye Garuga doing that run, and it's Hyper Uragon when its back is hyper and it does its roll. That thing goes fast. But hey, we're not fighting one of those. And really, rolling is a different thing from running. This monster does run faster than any other in the game. In fact, I'm pretty sure the only monster in the main series that has ever run faster is Frenzied Bracky in For You. In G rank specifically, when he's doing his turbo dash while frenzied. That thing was fast. Really fast. And I loved it. It was pretty hilarious, actually. But it's not in this game. Frenzied Bracky. And the turbo dash. Which is kind of a shame. Made Bracky really interesting because it suddenly had a way to close distances really, really fast, so you had to be a lot more on your guard. But whatever. It's not like this game is without its own challenges. It's definitely got some rather difficult things to deal with. I actually need to fight a lot of dead eyes because Deadeye has a really good poison longsword, and since that wasn't even rare six, I just didn't even want to look at it. And hey, now we're done with the first page of Deviants. Which means next up is... The ones that can be trouble. Yuri, why did you fail me? Let's see who we've got next. Oh boy, no. No, no, no. Why? Why? Because you see, uh, that. 
is an unpleasant quest. I think I'm going to try and get... Well, I don't know if I actually can. Yeah, I'm not going to have time before my next recording session. Unless I actually do get super sick and can't record for a while. Huh. Yeah, if I can get that one done and do Dread King 10 instead, I would actually rather do that. I feel like Dread King 10 is the easier quest, but... Whatever. Join us next time for some Dread Kings. See you then, friends. Or maybe just one Dread King. We'll see. But yes, see you then, friends. <laughs>